India currently does not have a licensing and regulatory regime for digital only banks. Such a bank would primarily rely on the internet to offer its services and not physical branches, all the while being subjected to the same prudential and liquidity norms as that of the incumbent commercial banks. But some of the leading banks in India seem to be already preparing for that eventuality, looking to seize the opportunity as and when the RBI makes a decision. The country's largest lender, State Bank of India, is looking to appoint an advisor who will revamp its mobile banking app Yono to enhance customer experience and ease of use. The next generation of Yono, to be labelled only Yono, will make SBI ready to launch a completely digital bank with a leaner and modular architecture with a personalised customer-centric design. And it's not just SBI. As the Reserve Bank of India lifted the restrictions imposed on HDFC Bank's digital initiatives, a senior executive of the bank said in a TV interview that the private lender believes there is space for a completely digital bank on the lines of what some other countries are doing. Singapore, Hong Kong and Malaysia have introduced separate digital bank licensing regimes, while South Korea, China and the UK have licensed digital banks within already existing regulations. In November last year, government think tank Niti Ayo floated the idea of setting up completely digital banks. In the absence of regulations for full-stack digital banks in India, the closest equivalent is Neo banks, where fintech companies partner with existing licensed banks. Such non-bank fintechs provide a software overlay through which consumers can access banking and value-added services. Some examples include Razorpay X and Open, whose main focus is businesses, while Neo banks like Jupiter and Neo are consumer-focused. This apart, existing licensed banks operate autonomous digital units under a different brand. These are essentially neo-banking operations of traditional banks. Examples are SBI's Yono, Kotak Mahindra Bank's 811 and Digibank by DBS. So, are fully digital banks an idea whose time has come in India? It is long overdue. It uh, certainly merits uh, in India for multiple reasons. Uh, we have a very diverse uh, bankable population. And if you look at both the inclusion side as well as on the, the upper middle class where highly banked uh, segment, both segments are now highly digital savvy compared to what it used to be. The newer segment of customers who are coming into business, their expectations are going to be to have it all done in digital fully. Bankers are digital, but only digital from their perspective. From a customer perspective, more than 70% of the journeys still need a physical touch point and they're all broken. None of them are seamless. Uh, it's high time if we open it up to fintechs and fully digital banks to say and come in and disrupt. It's a new fully digital bank FBI go, going for within SBI. Um, some of their existing customers would move in, but they won't be able to take them out from the existing database and put them over here. That did not be possible. Everyone will have to start from a clean slate. In September 2020, the then SBI chairman Rajneesh Kumar had said that Yono could be worth 40 to $50 billion. However, separating Yono from SBI may not be practical since its value is derived by being the digital interface of the bank. It is still a mobile banking app that is an extension of SBI. Each one of its users is still attached to an SBI branch. That is why SBI hopes Yono will lay the foundation for a digital bank in the future. Shahnaz Ahmed of Vidhi Center for Legal Policy tells how digital banks can position themselves in the market. Globally, there has been um, many countries which have introduced this concept of digital banks to promote more innovation in the banking sector. Uh, the second is to promote more competition within the banking sector itself. And the third is to promote financial inclusion. We are witnessing sort of efforts by existing banks at uh, digitizing ongoing processes. Now, traditional banks, what I feel is often they lack the incentive to sort of leverage technology uh, uh, to create more customized products for customers. And the reason why it happens is that because any such customization will mean that they have to change their core banking infrastructure. Now, what digital banks they do is that they will basically give us an opportunity to design more customer-centric products, uh, which I feel is relevant for 
serving customers that have traditionally remained underserved for instance your msmes globally what we are seeing the digital banks model that we that have been coming up um, especially for small businesses so you have a marketplace based lend, uh, you know banking model where the bank provides you with a basic uh, say current uh, current account uh, a current account and on top of that it will also help businesses to connect to other vendors like you know vendors who might provide them with financial account management hr solutions or other business solutions so it's it, in a way it is trying to provide like a one stop solution for the needs of small businesses so i think that's the kind of change value added services that customers will get access to so i think in the context of you know if if at all since you're giving that example if you know we if one can think about it to create like a separate unit what it will enable sbi to do is perhaps provide like a more customized solution targeting you know niche customer segments over and above what it currently provides digital banks are cost efficient models to serve different customer segments the cost base of a digital only bank can be up to 70% lower than its traditional counterparts the important task for them will be to meet the expectations of the segments they want to focus on be it millennials students salaried people or small businesses if you like this video share it and subscribe to business standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on youtube twitter facebook instagram telegram and linkedin